I want to do a nanotechnology demonstration. You know, there's a saying in fashion that everything old is new again. Well, that's true. Nanotechnology sounds very new, and it is. And it's in all the news. It's in science fiction. But it's also in, in a lot of consumer items. It's in, medical, in the medical field. Nanotechnology, nanoparticles, hot new thing. There are nanotechnology institutes. Yet, there's a type of nanotechnology, in particular gold nanoparticles, that have been known since ancient times. In the British Museum in London, there's a Roman art artifact called the Lysurgis cup, which is a beautiful example of what's called gold ruby glass. And basically, even in ancient times, they had known how to make gold nanoparticles. First of all, what are nanoparticles or nanotechnology? Nanotechnology is the synthesis, the characterization, and the properties of nanoparticles, which are particles on the order of one billionth of a meter, a nanometer, one times 10 to the minus, minus ninth meter. Basically, what happens is when you get particles, these are solid particles, but they're so small, you get very unique properties in the characteristics. And so I can make gold metal that's a red solution. We call it ruby red colloidal gold, named after the gold ruby glass that's in the British Museum. What I have here, and I've started this going here a little bit so that uh, we can go on, but we've got some hydrogen tetrachloroorate 3 solution. Very, very dilute, that's a key. It's a pale yellow solution, not, not dark at all. I have 1 times 10 to the minus 3 molar, 1 millimolar solution. I took 20 milliliters of that. I added it to about 180 milliliters of water so that I have a total volume in there of about 200 milliliters. So I've now got a 0.1 millimolar solution. That's key because if you want to make these small particles, you have to have them very dilute. Hydrogen tetrachloroorate is HAUCl4. It's gold, which is the aurum. The gold uh, symbol is, of course, AU. Um, gold in the plus three ionic or oxidation state. I had a very pale yellow solution, and I'm going to heat that to boiling. And I'm pretty close. I'm at about 82 degrees there, so it's, it's really heating. And what I want to do is watch that for a little bit, and I should start seeing it pretty soon. So uh, why don't I go in the back here, talk a little bit about uh, what we mean by nanotechnology and so on. Uh, while it's cooking, so to speak. And what I want to do, it's at about 86 degrees, is as it, um, what's going to happen here is I'm going to add some sodium citrate. And I want about two milliliters of that. So I'm going to go ahead and add one, two milliliters of the sodium citrate. And what should happen is very gradually you see some color changes in there. And that's pretty well boiling, so I don't think I need my thermometer in there. And I'm just going to stir it once in a while. Sodium citrate is a very, very mild reducing agent. It's a reducing agent in our bodies, so it better be pretty mild. It's going to reduce the AU3 cations, the gold 3 cations. And you can see that is boiling now. And you know what, as long as it's boiling, let's turn down that hot plate just a little bit um, so that we don't get too hot there. But that should continue to boil. And what we're going to see are some very gradual color changes. Eventually, we're going to make a gold metal solution that's bright ruby red. Let's give that just a little bit of time there. It does take a little bit of time. I have done a before and after here, but I want to begin to see the color changes, and then maybe we'll come back to it um, as the sodium citrate reacted. Gold nanoparticles are finding uses in a wide variety of areas. They're used to make HIV diagnostic, AIDS diagnostic kits. They're used as catalysts. Um, what you get basically is unique optical and electronic properties when you get the size of the gold atoms so very small. Size of the gold atoms are going to be about 10 nanometers, or actually 10 to 20 nanometers. 
Um, I don't know if we're seeing it, certainly boiling there quite vigorously. Just beginning to see a very pale, pale kind of a lavender color there. What it's going to do is go through a series of color changes. I'm going to bring that down. Do you see? Can you see that that's just a little bit pale lavender? It's, it's going to take a little bit of time, but once it gets going, ah, there we go. Now you can see the purple. You see that? It's turning purple. Basically, the sodium citrate is reducing the HAUCl4, and we're, f we're getting gold metal. But the gold metal particles are so small that rather than precipitate out, they're going to be dispersed in there. And you can see that now I have more or less purple gold solution. And we're going to let that go. And it's actually eventually going to turn. It doesn't take very long it's going to turn almost bright red. And I do have a before and after shot here, but I just want to watch that just a little bit because uh, it is getting a little hot there. It's getting a deeper purple color. Let's watch that. And what are some of the other unique properties of nanoparticles? And what gives it the color? You know, normally when something is colored, and turn that down just a little bit there, so... We don't get too vigorous. Um, normally, when something absorbs light, it excites electrons from a lower energy level to a higher energy level. That's not the source of the color here in the gold. Instead, it's, it's a very uh, obscure term. It's called SPR, surface plasmon resonance. Essentially, in that gold metal, you start oscillating electrons, and they get in resonance with the, uh, the light energy that they absorb, and that causes the color. And you can see that we've already gone to kind of a magenta color there. And that color is going to continue to change until it's like a ruby red. But I do have a before and after shot here. And what I have here is some of that ruby red colloidal gold. And you can see that it's a bright red, wine red color. And this is getting there. So it's, it's not going to take too much longer, I think, before that's cooked. How can we prove that we essentially have gold metal particles in there, that we have colloidal gold? Well, a colloid means that you have large particles, and so even they're not dissolved in solution, they are dispersed. And the characteristic of a colloid is that it will scatter light. And so what I have here is a laser pointer, and I'm going to go ahead and point that through this solution, and let's see what we see when we do that. Do we want to bring the lights down a little bit? Okay. And if you look into the solution, okay, let's, let's try it from this side instead here, okay? And were we real up close and personal here on the side there? Is that better? If you're looking at that, what you see is that you see the path that the laser is making through that solution. Can you see that? Okay. That's called the Tyndall effect. That's due to light scattering. If you had a normal solution, just a red solution, and I do have one here, just, you know, food coloring or whatever, you would not see the path of light because there are no particles. Okay, can we see that? Yeah, that's really good. That's the, again, we're getting light scattering due to what we call the ruby red colloidal gold. Let's just compare it with, I just have here, and you know, you can hardly tell the difference, but I know the difference. So this is just red food coloring. That's all it is. So this is a true solution. And if I shine at the same place, that laser through there, even though I see the laser coming out, if I look through that solution, I don't see the path of light at all, okay? Now, you might see a tiny bit as you're coming off to the side there, but I don't see any if I'm looking straight down. You really need to be looking straight down, I think, to see it best. So again, that's proving that we have gold particles in there. We'll go back and look one more time at our ruby red colloidal gold. And... I can see that perfectly right in there is the path of light right through it. We got that? Okay. 
And let's go ahead and look back here. And our ruby red colloidal gold is just about finished. Remember, it started out sort of a pale lavender, went to a magenta kind of, and it's getting red. Now it's still the orange, so it takes a little bit longer. Um, I want to show you one other effect, because this went through some color changes. I just have two test tubes here, and I'm going to fill them about a third full with the uh, ruby red colloidal gold. And I want them about the same level in each, and the exact amounts are not important. But actually, I'm going to go a little higher just so you can see them. OK, those are pretty close. We'll put them next to each other. What I want to do is add some sodium chloride. And this is showing us, actually, uh, the color change that is used in many types of uh, applications using the gold nanoparticles. What I'm going to do is add some water to the first. And I'm going to add about that much. And let's go ahead and mix that a little bit. And you can see that the only thing that we did there, basically, was we diluted the color. It's still the same kind of color, but it's been diluted because we've added some water. And in the second one, rather than add the same amount of water, I'm going to add a dilute sodium chloride, one molar sodium chloride. And I want to add it to about the same level. And I think you can already begin to see what's happened here. But let's do it to the same level so that, you know, we're, we've done our control experiment here. OK? You can see what happened. OK? Can you pick up those colors or not with me in front of them? Maybe it's better in there. Notice that the one where we added the water, can we see those colors? Is just the same red solution. It's just been diluted. The second one, I added some sodium chloride. What happened? It turned blue or purple. It's a light blue solution. That's actually a characteristic. And believe it or not, what's happening there is the sodium chloride is causing some of those very small particles to essentially begin to uh, aggregate a little bit. And so you're getting larger particles. And that's a, a characteristic very unique to nanotechnology that's not known with other kinds of solids and liquids. You get just a bit, little bit bigger. And that oscillation or resonance that we talked about changed from red to blue. And that's actually what we were seeing here. And this is pretty much cooked, so I'm going to turn that off. I'm not going to take it off the hot plate yet. So we made the gold, the ruby red colloidal gold. We demonstrated its properties. If you Google gold nanoparticles, you're going to get a billion hits. <laughs> you know, uh, So many uses that are being researched now. It's absolutely amazing. Yet, despite how amazing that modern chemistry is, it really goes back a 1,000 years, although, and this is important, they didn't understand what they were doing, but they were able to do it. They had made that basically uh, by accident, you might say. But that's how craftspeople did it. They knew what to do, and they knew how to make gold ruby colloidal glass. It's absolutely beautiful. Gold metal in a red solution. Modern chemistry, nanotechnology.